This is Bruce Jansen with Elsevier Global Medical News at San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, where I'm talking with Nicole Stout Gergich, a physical therapist at the Breast Care Center at Bethesda Naval Medical Center, who's been doing some very interesting work about the prevention of shoulder dysfunction in breast cancer patients. Uh, we hear a lot about lymphedema, don't hear so much about shoulder problems. Are they common? Yes, absolutely. The scope of the problem, Bruce, really is about, if you look at the literature, about 70%, uh, upwards of 70% of patients have been reported to have shoulder complications at the one-year mark post-surgically. Um, and that's quite variable. Some numbers report 45%, some report 60%. Uh, in the study that we're doing, we are seeing patients preoperatively, and we follow them on a prospective model of care out to one year, every three months for one year. And what we're finding is with that just very slight intervention, our incidence rate of shoulder complications at one year is only about uh, 10%, less than 10% actually, uh, in the first glean on our data. And it's an important, it's an important context to, to put this in that we're seeing less surgery done, we're seeing less with sentinel lymph node biopsies, um, but what we're seeing still are these shoulder morbidities that exist. So even with sentinel lymph node, there still are shoulder complications, and we're seeing that our study further reduces those, those problems. And what kind of, what's the nature of these shoulder problems? Um, in the short term, in this first year time frame, the shoulder discomfort, the shoulder discomfort is there and present in patients, but the problem really is in, with shoulder stability. Um, patients are not able to put their shoulder in the correct postural position, uh, so they begin to use compensatory muscle strategies. Uh, we also see just a very slight loss in the range of motion early on. The problem, though, is if you don't catch these things in that very early time period of about the first year, they become larger problems down the line. So in three years or in five years, then you start to see the frozen shoulders, uh, the rotator cuff complications, rotator cuff tears, uh, and tendonitis. So we believe that by employing this prospective intervention program that we are in fact going to prevent those things down the line. And what, what kind of interventions do you do uh, when people start developing the discomfort and the... Very, very simple and straightforward. Every patient is given preoperatively. We do a baseline assessment of their full range of motion, their activity level, uh, and their limb volume because we also assess for lymphedema. Um, and then at the one month mark, we review that exercise program. They're instructed to start the exercises uh, about two weeks after the surgery or after the drains are removed. At that point, they start a range of motion program, and it's just simple, forward flexion overhead, abduction out to the sides, uh, an internal and external rotation of the glenohumeral joint, as well as some scapular retraction activities uh, for scapular stabilization. Usually at the one month mark, most of the patients have been doing the exercises and they are on their way to full recovery. By three months, the majority of our patients have recovered full motion, but those who haven't then were able to detect that and intervene with a more intense program, a little more of a tailored program. So that may mean um, a little bit more aggressive stretching on the part of the therapist who's seeing them, maybe a little bit more of a strengthening and muscle re-education program, but it's just one or two visits at that, at that three month mark. And then by the 12 month point, we see that most of our patients have recovered fully. So the intervention is very mild. It's, um, it's a very conservative intervention, if you will, as opposed to what a patient would have to go through if they would develop a frozen shoulder uh, or a, a rotator cuff tear. Then you're talking about intensive therapy that's painful probably three to four times a week for the course of one to two months to alleviate a problem like that. So by doing this on the front end, it's less invasive, it's much more conservative, uh, and we believe it's cost effective to do it this way as opposed to waiting until those patients develop problems to, down the line to treat them.